Senator Hawley. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thanks to the witnesses for being here. Uh, Mr. McMullen, Mr. Shankaran, let me start with you. In the course of preparing for this hearing, I came across a slide deck that was apparently prepared by both of your companies together. I've got it here. Uh, one of, on one of the slides, you talk about your complementary ESG strategies, and you put this forward as a, as a reason to move forward with the merger. Now, ESG refers to environmental, social, and governance considerations. And you talk here about your shared commitment to workforce diversity, equity, and inclusion. So let's just talk about that for a second, if we could. Maybe, let's start with you, Mr. McMullen. Give me your sense of, of what you mean by workforce inclusion. Does that include religious commitments? Are those relevant to workforce inclusion? Yeah, when you look at our overall ESG commitments, obviously uh, the amount of uh, impact that we have from an energy usage standpoint is incredibly important. To have a company that's inclusive in terms of from diversity, equity, inclusion, that means including everybody. Uh, uh, people are uh, promoted and rewarded based on their success and uh, ability to be a leader uh, in the organization and contribute to the organization. And we do not make judgments on anybody in terms of any of their personal beliefs uh, and do not think that's appropriate either. Hey, so that includes people of faith, I think is what you're saying. It includes everything. So have you, has your company ever fired an employee or disciplined an employee for their religious beliefs? Um, not that I'm aware of. Well, that's interesting because Senator Cotton just yeah. read at, at some length into the record an EEOC lawsuit. That's a government lawsuit which your company just settled after an adverse ruling by a federal district court in which you apparently took disciplinary action to the extent of firing employees in Arkansas based on their religious beliefs. Do you think that's workplace inclusion? Well, I, as I told Senator Cotton, I, I personally am not aware of the details of that. How is that possible? You're being sued by the federal government. You've settled a suit and you don't know about it? Uh, no, I do not always know about well, it. That's, extra that's extraordinary. Do, you, do your shareholders know about that? I mean, what else do you not know about? What about you, Mr. Shankaran? Uh, have, has your company ever fired someone like Mr. McMullins has based on their religious beliefs? Senator, nothing that I know of. Um, when we think about our diversity and inclusion agenda, Senator, we represent, we work in communities, in, we're in Chicago, we're in Alaska, we're in Montana, we're in D.C., and we, we make sure that our stores represent the communities that we support and we recruit from the communities to serve the communities. That's the fundamental principle of our diversity and inclusion effort. Let me just ask you about this. Why would having complementary ESG strategies be a justification for a merger? Why would that be relevant at all? Well, if, if you look at some of the things that both of us have done from uh, Kroger's commitment to zero hunger, zero waste, and we've made the commitment, if we operate in a market, there'll be zero hunger in that market, and we'll work with everybody, in, and especially food banks. Uh, we've provided 2.3 billion meals. Uh, by merging with Albertsons, as an example, we'll be able to have that positive impact and really uh, further grow on what both of our companies have done individually. Don't you think you should be asking what positive impact you're going to have on the people you serve? Like, for instance, the ability to provide food at a reasonable cost to people who need it, the ability to actually offer a product that consumers need and want. You know, here's what I find interesting. Lena Khan sat where you're sitting, she's the chairman of the FTC, just a few weeks ago, and she testified under oath that she's seeing an, a, an accelerating trend of companies justifying mergers on the basis of ESG, as if that should somehow allow them to evade scrutiny for the merger. She testified that she thought it had absolutely no relevance whatsoever. And I think that she is absolutely correct. The fact that you're using this as a justification for your merger, I think, frankly, is ridiculous. But maybe let's talk about one or two things that I think are relevant. What are your plans for closing stores upon the consummation of this merger? How many stores do you plan to close? Mr. Uh, McMullen, start with you. Uh, we do not plan to close stores as part of this merger. Zero? Zero. Mr. Shankaran? Uh, Senator, as the CEO of the new company, Mr. McMullen makes those decisions, but as he said, he plans to close zero stores. And, so you, and you, won't be, you won't be shuttering them in any form, not spending them off, not, not giving them away. You're, you're going to keep everything open in your current footprint. Yes, but we will work with the FTC in terms of divesting stores to a viable uh, competitor, and if that's not successful, uh, using the Spenco uh, structure as well. Well, what does that mean? I mean, how many, how many stores are you going to spin off then? 
Uh, we don't know. Uh, we're in active conversations with the FTC, and uh, as we're going through that process with the FTC, uh, there'll be a, a combined agreement. There'll be an agreement uh, with the FTC in terms of how that's handled. How do you plan to reduce your workforce as a outcome of this merger? How many layoffs are we talking about? Uh, we will not lay off any frontline workers as a part of this. What, what, what does that mean? Uh, no workers? Yeah, if you look at frontline workers. You're inserting the word frontline. Let's just stay with Well, frontline would be warehouses, manufacturing plants, stores. Uh, there would be no layoffs. So, so no layoffs at all? No layoffs on any of those positions. Sir. Well, well, what positions would you consider laying off then? Well, the, we'll uh, together we'll look at, uh, you know, if, from an administrative support standpoint, we'll look at, if you look at historically, uh, when we've merged with the companies on Harris Teeter and Roundy's, things like that, uh, we've ended up not laying off anybody because what we have found is the merged companies do things better than we do. And one of the key things is making sure they're finding the best of both. Let me, let me ask you this, Mr. McMullen, and I'm sure Senator Durbin wants to answer question, ask questions here, so I'll hand it over here in just a second. But you, you have, as I think you testified earlier, you, you conducted a stock buyback recently of I think about a billion dollars. Why not, why not give that money, pass that money along to your associates, as you say, in the form of higher wages? Yeah, as, as I uh, shared earlier, uh, we've invested an incremental $1.2 billion in associate wages uh, over the last four years. Could have been $2 billion if you hadn't have done the stock buybacks. Uh, we, we also uh, spent uh, uh, over a billion, right at a billion dollars of uh, uh, improving pension benefits as well. And it's really balancing all the constituents when you look at customers, associates, uh, communities, and shareholders. Back to your earlier comments, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair.